on this week's UBC From Here, an Olympian goes to class. I chose to come to UBC Okanagan because this is where I grew up here in Kelowna and it's nice to be home and close to my parents, of course, and my dog. It's just a great place to learn and really develop my knowledge. Bringing mindfulness to the classroom. Part of it for me is thinking about social work strong, connection to concepts of reflective practice and reflexive practice. Improving healthcare in Brazil. No healthcare system is perfect. Unfortunately, sometimes patients fall through the cracks. An integrated health system will help to address those issues. In only 10 years, UBC has had a truly transformational impact on the communities we serve, and in turn, those communities have defined the kind of UBC that we are becoming here in the Okanagan. It's been, I think, even better than anyone could have imagined. Of all the achievements at UBC Okanagan in these past 10 years, one thing for which I am particularly proud is the partnership the university enjoys with the Okanagan Nation and the impact we're having on the lives of young Aboriginal people here. The campus is helping Aboriginal youth from the Okanagan and beyond realize their potential and achieve their dreams as graduates of UBC. For this reason, I'm particularly pleased to be sharing the stage this afternoon with the Okanagan Nation to renew the university's memorandum of understanding with the nation on the 10th anniversary of its original signing. This agreement and the very fact that a university campus began with the signing of a memorandum of understanding with our Aboriginal partners is in fact unique in Canada. And I think that's something of which we should all be justly proud, both the Okanagan nation for your foresight in joining with us and the privilege that we have enjoyed becoming part of this Okanagan community. Well, it's very significant. For us, it's recognition of us as Okanagan Silk peoples, working in partnership and uh, developing a strong relationship with this very beautiful and fine campus. It uh, means a lot to our people. We're celebrating now 10 years of existence here at this Okanagan campus and celebrating as well 100 years for the University of British Columbia. And for us, having the advanced education that is so badly needed is something that is very, very wonderful. And this reflects all of those accomplishments and the hard work that it takes to get there. And we have a very fine cooperation here, a very strong working relationship with this campus, and it makes us proud as Okanagan Silks people to be part of this. I think there are two things we're celebrating. We're clearly celebrating the 10th year of UBC Okanagan, and personally, it's overwhelming. It's wonderful to see what this campus has evolved to and the role it's playing in the community. And then, of course, we're celebrating the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding with the Okanagan Nation. And that also is extremely rewarding to see the results of that original MOU, which I signed in 2005. As a chief of the West Bank First Nation, it shows progress. I was here 10 years ago and was part of that initial welcoming of the UBCO at that time, now recognized as the Okanagan campus. And now to see the achievements and to know that the Okanagan Silks people, our Aboriginal peoples, are part of that, it makes me very, very pleased. And to see that we have a future uh, with our education, that future gets brighter and brighter every single day. I always had a vision for the campus and I always thought I had dreamt fairly large. It so has exceeded anything I ever thought it could be within this period of time. And so I've been overwhelmed, I've been heartened, I've been inspired 
by what this campus has accomplished. And it has nothing to do with me. It has to do with the people here and the leaders and the government and all the people who have followed us. It's just, it's just remarkable. Determination means never giving up. It's about putting your whole heart and soul into something and at the end of the day having no regrets. I'm Kelsey Sirwa. I'm a student here at UBCO taking human kinetics and I'm a world champion, an X Games gold medalist and an Olympic silver medalist. I chose to come to UBC Okanagan because this is where I grew up here in Kelowna and it's nice to be home and close to my parents of course and my dog. It's just a great place to learn and really develop my knowledge. I chose human kinetics because when I grow up I want to be a physiotherapist and it just makes sense with where I've gone so far in my life and where I want to continue in that direction. I want to be a physiotherapist because I feel like it's going to be time for me to inflict the pain on other people <laughs> for once. But no, in all honesty, I think it's a nice way to balance work and play still and everyone that I've met, they do a really good job of that and it's just one of those things that you keep developing your knowledge. There's many similarities between being a high performance athlete and transferring those skills over to being a student. Through my sport I've learned a lot about dedication, perseverance, time management, being committed to a goal and a deadline and following through all the way to that and coming back to school after being an athlete for so long is definitely a little bit challenging, but I think I was able to adapt pretty quickly. And I mean, it's all about transferable life skills. The future for me, I'm gonna continue on to the next Olympics. I keep joking that I brought home the wrong color of medal from the Olympics, so I wanna get a gold one. Obviously gonna continue my studies, graduate, do a master's program through UBC, I feel like, for physiotherapy, and then just do that. <laughs>
and for the healthcare system. And obviously it impacts in a better outcomes for healthcare here in Canada. My hopes for this research would be that stakeholders and policymakers are actually going to really listen. One, we have that unique viewpoint from our patients about what their priorities are for integration. And so I'd really hope that they take that away and think about how we build our health system and how we reform our health system in order to meet their priorities. A project such as this can have a significant impact on the healthcare system, both locally here in Kelowna, provincially in the province of BC, and as well other provinces in Canada and internationally in Brazil, first of all, as well as other countries. It has the potential to impact quality of care for patients a better integrated system helps us to provide better care so patients don't fall through the cracks. Thoughts? Mindfulness has many different definitions, but some of the essential qualities of it are its focused attention in a particular way. Part of it for me is thinking about social work, strong connection to concepts of reflective practice and reflexive practice. And that's the idea that you are thinking about your practice both while you're practicing and before you practice thinking about what do you want that practice to look like and afterwards, how did that go? Mindfulness has been around for a long time and I think it has a number of variations to it. Trying to be precise about it is probably doing some disservice. We've thought about incorporating mindfulness partly because we're a clinical program and we're a clinical program with a strong focus on the use of self. So it makes sense that we want our students to think about how they're present and how they are using themselves in their clinical practice. This idea of mindfulness being incorporated into the curriculum has really been met with a lot of enthusiasm and support. However, I do think that there is still an element of, well, what does it mean? Many of our students are currently in their field education placement and they will be at the same time in the mindfulness-based stress reduction program. So this is just so complementary as issues come up dealing with real clients, real client issues face to face that they can start to look at how can they apply non-judgment to this situation that may conflict with their personal values. How mindfulness is incorporated into the curriculum is that I do think it's seen in many of the professional schools as a benefit to students as they're going out into the real world of how to apply theory to practice. Students, I think, are going to be very open to it. I think the students themselves have experienced a whole lot of stress. The more they can see the benefits for themselves, I think the more they'll see the benefits for other people as well. Here at UBC Okanagan, the other thing that we're seeing is that mindfulness is part of the Faculty of Education. The School of Nursing has taken this up in terms of mindful practice. It's nice for our program in that there's a broader campus commitment to the concept of mindfulness and in the professional schools, the way that this can be incorporated in professional practice.